Welcome to the Penny Bloom Podcast. Ain't another place that has got more bomb bass. Rump past your mom, dad's listening to Tomcats. Talking everything that make you sad. We don't want that. We're here to make you smile. Put your mind at ease. Peace, love, and bloom. And always praise Keanu Reeves. This what we about. Get some weeding now. We'll talk until we can't no more. And then we peace and out. All right, let's go. Penny Bloom Podcast. It's the Penny Bloom Podcast. Penny Bloom Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome in to Winter is Blooming, a Game of Thrones rewatch podcast by us, the Penny Bloom Podcast. Today is season three, episode six, titled The Climb. Climb! Climb! Written by David Benioff and D.B. Weiss, directed by Alec Sakharov, who is responsible for many a great episode in this show. Um, He was the director of photography in there and the cinematographer in the pilot, the second episode, the penultimate episode of season one, Baylor, and the finale of season one. Okay. Yep. Yep. Dude's got a visual sensibility. (laughs) Um, Good track record there. Yes, indeed. And he directed What is Dead May Never Die in season two, which, if I recall correctly, that's the one with the shot of uh, of Theon, like, sitting in the dark with Episode nothing but the... Episode three, yeah. yeah, I gave. Tyrion sets up his rat trap. Okay, that that was my scene. Your scene was Yorin tells Arya about Willem. Mm. Let's see, what is dead? I'm trying to just think of what happened in there. But I gave Alfie Allen the performance, actually, yeah, for the yeah, episode, so... That was a big... Um, that was when Theon yeah. chose his side. Mm. But good. Uh, that makes sense because this episode was also very. This dude's got the dude's got the shit on him. Yeah. Visually, it was it was nice. Yeah, um, he's a he's a visual he's a visual storyteller. Because wow, this one was fucking pretty. But uh, how many are we? Or is it the max locations? Because I don't. I, there was no Danny this episode, right? No, there's not. It's far yeah, from the max locations. There. In fact, it'll be rather short. Uh, compared yeah. to the rest, because we spend so much runtime with one goal in one storyline: uh, climb up a big ass wall. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's pretty much all they do. Yeah, it's, yeah tough... it's just get some boots on, go up the wall, and once you get up there, kiss, and that's pretty much that all that happens. Yeah, like, you know, someone tries, someone screen, will so. try to take you out, and that's okay. You know, <laughs> we, we 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 overcome that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, let's. Uh, what do you say we get Damn. into it then? Ah, right, let's do it. Let's do it. What I really enjoyed about this episode is that for like the first 20 minutes, we do nothing but bounce back and forth between North of the Wall and uh, the Brotherhood Without Banners, which I thought was just a brilliant choice and a really good choice for their pacing. Mm -hmm. However, our breakdown will start in King's Landing. So, uh, in King's Landing, Lord Tywin Lannister is meeting with Lady Olenna to discuss having Sir Loras marry his daughter Cersei. And, you know, they go back and forth. Elena's like, well, she's a bit fucking old at this point, you know? She might not Mm. be able to have children. (laughs) Uh, Menopause will be on her before long. I'll spare you the details of, you know, or whatever. Them, these two right here. They can fucking, they can go. They're the only two, the only two right now, I think. Like, I I was trying to think, because Varys, Elena was slam dunking on Varys. Mm. Like, Varys could not hold his feet. Tyrion can't really hold, well... I give Varys a little more, actually. Varys was okay, but still, Olena was was dominant. She was sunning his ass, yeah. Tyrion, Olena was r- no fucking ran chance. through Tyrion, and like, so I was trying to think of other people in the realm right now that could actually stand up and talk to Olena like Tywin does here. Like, who else right now could actually keep up? Even uh, so, you know, and that's the that's mm-hmm. the line that. Olena delivers, you know, it's very rare that a man lives up to his <laughs> reputation. Uh, he gets so through this, like, what's so fascinating about this interaction between Olena and Tywin is that Olena is really graceful. She's mm. really good about dancing around the topics and kind of getting to the point and so on and so, like, getting to the point without saying it outright. And Tywin is head down, I'm going to fucking talk about it. And that's why they... That's why they butt heads so masterfully is because mm-hmm. he is so straight to the point, saying it exactly <laughs> as it is. Yeah. 
or at least how he thinks it is. It's his sheer brashness and confidence mm-hmm. that gets him through yeah. through interactions. It's while the Elena, uncertainty that's yeah. uncomfortable for you. Let me remove yes. it for you, he says. Yeah, like, oh, I don't know. Like, they're... I was really expecting good. I kind of forgot how this went, you know, and it, it, the way I was expecting it to go is like I'm expecting Olena to slam dunk Tywin here as well. You know, I, I'm she's just made the runs through everyone and it kind of seemed that way. Like they were playing it to give her kind of the upper edge in the conversation at first and and, and then while like she probably won the conversation. He's he got the power to make the, things the happen. The altercation. Yeah, yeah, the the bigger implication Tywin won, but of the conversation Elena one because mm-hmm. whenever she, it starts to get you know like it's not very uh you, you know this removing the stain um of being yeah. gay you know having that and then Elena's like well I don't think uh incest uh you know removes or comes out yeah, as easily and either oh, and then dude, he goes and the way she and he's like, like she pokes and prods at him. She's like, you know, you and your, you and your friends when you were yeah. younger. It's perfectly you, natural for boys to take a tumble. Little cousins, little, you know, yeah. never, never once. No, and I don't, that was, I don't know. Tywin is a. I think he's just brashly homophobic. You know, I think that's kind of all it is. Uh, yeah, but I could see like, um, if I don't know, there was some. That's his secret, you know, like every Lannister has some secret, you know, to them. Uh, uh, Cersei and Jaime, it's, you know, their, their, you know, their, their secret. But then his secret is that he's, he's just secretly closeted gay, you know, mm-hmm. but he's so, I don't know. Like, I, I think that'd just be hilarious that like, that's why him and his wife, I don't know, like they never had kids just because he can never get it up. You know, he right. himself, he can never, I don't know, but like, yeah, I know he eventually got there, but I don't know. I was just, I was, I was, cause it, it seemed that she knew something that Elena kind of, oh, it could see, just be I generalized. That, it's very yeah. general is like people just grow up and that's just what happens. But I didn't know that that's, I didn't know if it was that she was trying to poke at his past specifically. Uh, I don't um, know if it was specifically his, I took it as Olena knew how to push his buttons yeah, uh, because of the way that he was talking about Loris, she knew he would get extremely. He would, oh. move, past, he would move past the topic. Oh, I didn't see that. That's what um, I didn't see. I thought that she was just talking about it as, in general and being like, "Yeah, it's obvious. It's it's obvious. It's natural to see how my how Loris can come about to what he was doing." But also, I thought it was maybe something in the back of mm-hmm. being like, "I also know something about you," and like, but I, it's definitely just. He's so homophobic that it's so uncomfortable for him to even talk about so that he just right wants to it. move. Oh yeah. my god, how did I not? He'll okay, move right past it, and it breach it branches straight into a topic for her to talk about mm. because building oh, off of that is when she goes the stain. You want to talk about a stain? Well, how about brothers and sisters? Okay. That's not cool, you know, like yeah. Wow. So that was an example of her turning his hatefulness <laughs> around and making it her advantage, which was brilliant diana rig again wow, just... i didn't even see that that's yeah that's even better yeah because like Elena is fantastic because overall i guess you know the feathers broken tywin you know he got what he wanted you know mm-hmm. and it, it might be my line the a rare thing a man that lives up to his reputation that was good uh that was it, good. just pretty i don't know even accepting defeat but still having like winning i don't know she won the conversation there and like definitely put tywin in his seat but tywin's just he happens to be the hand of the king but yeah he forced he forces her into a corner says you know i'll make loris a knight of the king's guard which will forsake all lands and the inheritance to high garden it'll pass to joffrey and marjorie's kids and that'll be that you you cool with that and i mean smart yeah i mean like and and she's like yeah right like he'll defend Joffrey, and he's like, "Well, he's a decorated soldier, and he follows his vows very seriously." So, I like, know yeah, he's like, he's like, I might not fuck with him on a personal note, but I know he's a good knight. So, like, damn, and it's like, this? and he, he he was, I don't know, because the Charles Dance, he has the possibility of getting the performance, but he's like the the lowest on the tier for this episode for me, for my nods. Um, I think he did really great here, and it was, you know, he didn't have to yell. There was no yelling. It was, I guess for a little bit when he got, you know, offended. But, like, I don't know. It was just he he's very – every time we have seen him, he's always been doing something badass or he's carving a stag and or I don't know, do, doing something. This but this time – yeah, this this he he needed to talk to her and he needed to get through it and he was like, but then he had the pencil and paper ready, you know, or 
quill and paper, yeah, quill. ink and quill. Or yeah, uh, he had, he had it at the ready, and you know that's like that's his weapon right now. Not the sword yeah. isn't you know the it just was it was nice to see the sword for yeah. him. Yeah, so I like the just the whole scene was aw- it was just a super awesome scene. Don't the two big families that are fighting right now at King's Landing like all of it doesn't you know it's just mm. it's really good. All, ah, yeah, it's really but, good. I don't know. I don't think he'll get the performance. Not actually. I just wanted to give him, just I guess, the flowers for this ep- for this. He doesn't quite get it for me, but yeah, he's that. This is another great episode, and for the example of just everyone's so good at playing the character they've been playing. You know, um, all across the board. Diana Rigg is Elena. Charles dances Tywin mm-hmm. in that scene. Joe, both just perfect in that role. But uh, next up, we are heading to the gardens. Where Sansa Stark is trying to get closer to Loras um, by discussing their wedding, their impending wedding. And Loras is very, you know, he's he's quite clearly uninterested, um, but brightens when the discussion of a lavish wedding is planned. Uh, you know, and Sansa for once becomes suspicious when she realizes that Loras seems to be more excited by the food and the wedding <laughs> And by her, and he's like, "Of course, the bride. Of course, yes. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And the bride. I forgot. Oh yeah. Duh. That that uh, small detail of of the wedding. And then he like um, plans her wedding dress and stuff. <laughs> yeah. And, oh yeah. Uh, no. Oh, now let me say the the straight things that I need to say now. You yeah, know, ba- exactly. like literally. I don't know it was. I. I. It's just hilarious how he's just sitting there, and Sansa's like, "Oh, what a great, what a beautiful pin you have on." He's like, "It's more, it's of, more a, of a brooch, really." Bro- you know how I, it's just not even like I don't know. It's just she's trying so hard to flirt. You yeah, know, she's, like well, she's so, just trying to like, get him to talk yeah. at all. Yeah, no, you know, and she's like that is a lovely uh, pen. He's like, it's more of a brooch, <laughs> though I suppose well, a brooch is a type yeah, of pen. Yes, it's really. like a pen. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, he's just so like I don't know. It's not. I, I don't know. I think it's handled just so well here. I just oh, feel so dude. bad for Sansa though. You know, like she's oh, like yeah. she's been at the, like promised Loris and like oh I'm gonna plant the idea and it's gonna be so amazing. You too, and then like I don't know. Like I don't know if they get a walk together though at the end, so they they probably take a nice stroll yeah. in the gardens and stuff. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I do love um, me some Finn Jones as Loris Tyrell as well. I think he's incredible, and Sophie Turner again does a great job as Sansa in this one. Mm. Um, just the way, yeah. Like whenever he does get up and offers him, offers her his hand to like go for a walk, the like excitement on her face and stuff. Yeah, it's, she's really good at it, but. Uh... You know, she she makes it clear that before they came to King's Landing, she had never even left Winterfell. Um, so just, sad. It's where she'd always yeah. been. It's like and, so sad. Like, yeah, before I came here, I've never left Winterfell. And then, like, yeah. he knows that she's never been anywhere else and she's been here and, like, just Man, been a prisoner been here the whole time. And it's like... Well, and then, like, he, in another roundabout way, you know, like, she, he's obviously not being tortured in the same way that Sansa has been, but, like, he can't be himself. Yeah. You know, like, in the in the public eye, he he is mm-hmm. a prisoner to the way things are. So, like, you know, when he, he agrees that the Red Cape, the Red Keep is the most terrible place there is, that is, that is truthful common ground that they both share. Yeah. They're like, yeah, I fucking hate it here, man. Like, this oh, yeah. is... Yeah, you know, we were just if I talking could be far away from this place. That'd be ideal. about like a a relationship out of duty. You know, like how you know with Din and Bo, like this one, it feels like it's even more out of duty. No romance at all because one just doesn't feel that way. You know, Truly Sansa feels that way, but like it's more out of just like the the idea of him and not like yeah. out of his actual person. But yeah, like, she, she's I never feel like spent enough time with him to know that. Yeah, or this would be like the opposite completely. They they'd be together, you know, out of duty only, and then maybe. It's not like love still, but it maybe just be Loras as like protect, you know, like seeing it'd be, like it'd more be of the, just a protection. Uh, Rhaenyra just, and yeah, oh, per- oh perfect, yeah, yeah, perfect. Uh, but I'd hope, uh, I don't know, that just didn't seem Rhaenyra wasn't treating. I don't know, that one didn't seem fully right. It, it was okay, <laughs> but there was I don't know, I, I don't know. Um, Something struck you as wrong about it. I get you. There was it. It didn't seem. I don't know. I guess. Um, yeah, but uh, that, that's, I I don't know. I didn't even how did I not think of that analogy before that though? That's more perfect, per- more perfect. Yeah, yeah. The exact in universe exactly here already. Yeah, but, but uh, uh, next up, we've got Cersei and Tyrion observing the couple from up in Cersei's chambers, overlooking the garden. 
And Sir- Tyrion sarcastically asks, which of the four of them has it the worst? You know? Mm-hmm. Uh, I gotta think it's Sansa, but I'm sure that Loras will come to know a certain specific sort of misery over the over the next several years. Uh, a, a, a truly singular misery, as he puts it, which I absolutely loved. I thought that was an extremely funny line. But uh, he then, you know, he branches the topic and he's like, all right. Get to the meat of the matter here. Mm. Um, so I just want you to answer yes or no. Mm. Honestly, tell me, did you have me? Ki- did you try to have me kill during the Battle of Blackwater? No. And answer. This is what gave Lena Headey my performance. Um, oh, yeah. uh, okay. That's okay. Because, this makes sense. Yeah. Okay. No, there's a there's a certain essence to her when she, you know I like the way she's she's snipe, like uh, like I've said before. Every scene with Peter Dinklage and Lena Headey together is a fucking gold mine, mm. and uh, they continue it here. And the, when he asks, the way she just sits there. There's this look on her face where she, you can tell, this is one of those examples of like acting and showing, Mm -hmm. not telling. Mm -hmm. You can tell she wishes she could say yes. Yeah. She's like, yeah. She's like, for the love of God, I wish I did. That was not me though. My son is a fucking idiot. And I mean, but I think, what does he say at the very end? Like, oh yeah, is my life still in danger? Yes. Probably. Like she, like that was like, I don't know, she was like at any, like, like you're right. Like she's like, she loves, she wants to get anything out that is like, man, yeah, I I wish, I don't know. Like it, oh, I didn't even think about her for like performance here, but like. Well, yeah, because it is. It's, it is, it's not, yeah, it is just like. It's her one movement and very like her, painful. Her yeah. Fa- oh wow. Yeah. No, she, yeah, she did. does a really good job. But there's like this. Uh, there's this essence to the scene too that almost made me go with Cersei for the character, because this is displayed on several occasions. She hates Tyrion, but she will not kill him. Mm. Like that's that's a that's a level she won't she won't stoop to. There's something like about. There is something about the Lannister name and the the blood they share that prevents her from going, yeah, I'm going to kill your ass. Because, like, in season seven, whenever he's the one who goes up to her chambers privately, she has every reason to kill him. She He's betrayed the cause. He's working mm. for a different queen. He's tr- like, And he's like, you have to go north. You have to defend against the White Walker threat. And... He knew he knew very well he was risking his life because there's no reason seemingly for him for her not to kill him then. And she doesn't. So there's just this there's this Mm. air to them that's really fascinating where they both just despise each other. But neither of them wishes the other dead, which is just a really, really interesting dichotomy when in a show where people when they hate each other, kill each other. Mm. It's fascinating when they hate each other and refuse to kill each other. Yeah, it's like just. Cersei's ex, you know, uh, I see Tyrion just being like, yeah, I, I hate the things you do. I think Tyrion's hate for Cersei is Much more of just time. the hate that she has for him. And like, mm-hmm. it, I don't think it's just that he's, if the, if he was allowed to love her and have a good relationship with her, I think he would. Oh, um, I think it's, and it's Cersei's more of just, her fault. Yeah, I think it, maybe she doesn't go that far. Is it just because their blood you know and it's just like you are my sibling and like i love one of my siblings more than anyone else in the whole world and then you're just my blood like i'm not gonna kill you or like um, that's where my money's at just because like there there is nothing else holding her back you know she's stated on so many occasions that she despises him you know like Mm -hmm. and she clearly has murderous intent on numerous occasions so it's like so like that's the only thing i can possibly think of there's also the fact that like i said these interactions between lena hetty and peter dinklage i didn't realize how frequent they are in early seasons and when jamie's not there she kind of fucking needs it ah okay you know like yeah that makes sense but when are this we gonna get him back? Yeah, she she says it even here, like, but when are we gonna get him back? You yeah, know, you like, know, like she's kind of going a little crazy. Like, yeah, like 
He's the only person she can be honest with about this thing because she knows while they despise each other, he still wouldn't go that low. He might do it to uh, hurt her father. He might do it to hurt her, but he would never do that to hurt Jamie, like expose that to hurt Jamie. And he knows that that would immediately lessen their family name. It would hurt them in the war. It would make everything founded. So he can't say that yeah, to anyone. I guess that's why this war is kind of being fought in the first place. Um, it is. Is because of Jamie and Sir. So, like, it's probably the stress of that, like, being the cause of all of this at the same, you know, like, hmm. at the same time, like, having, and then not having any power anymore. She used to actually have, like, some hold over Joffrey as well, and Robert, probably, mm-hmm. like, while Robert was king. Like, she was right. she was pulling the strings and doing stuff. Um, like, she had some sense of power and control, and then when she loses it, and then she doesn't have Jamie anymore as well, yeah, that's, I don't know. All things it, come it makes sense at the same time. where she gets to. You know, it makes sense that she does just go absolute mad, mad yeah. and power crazy. Um yeah, no, and like it, it does, it does make a whole lot of sense, you know, especially given the fact that she's been told she can't have that sort of power. Like she's just like, I absolutely fucking can, and in fact, I will. Um, she's yep. a great character, and fantastically performed by Lena Headey. So I, I went ahead and mm, gave Lena like Headey the performance here. Um, I like that. Even though there were other performers who were in it more, who also. Uh, put on health like i don't think there was a single performance in this episode that i would go nah i didn't really like that one they were all really fucking good you know what Mm -hmm. i'm saying so it's like it's hard but just had to come down somewhere okay no i like yeah this whole this whole interaction where Tyrion's like well he's fucking stupid isn't he Mm -hmm. you know commanding he could have poisoned me and no one would have (laughs) known but instead he ordered a knight of the king's guard to murder the hand of the king in front of his entire army what a dumbass. And Cersei's like, yeah, man, wish I could tell you something different here, but I can't. Um, and he's like, is my life still in danger? danger? And she's like, I don't know, fucking probably. And like, because she doesn't say yes and she doesn't say no. She's like, probably. The fu-? Like, I clearly don't have a hold on this fucking kid, man. You know I don't know. Um, mm. But the the <laughs> rationale there being like, all I know is that as long as Tywin's here, in Tywin's hand, he won't do anything. He can't do anything. Um, mm. And that's when they breach the uh, conversation to Jamie, and uh, she asks Tyrion which one of them should be the one to break the news to Sansa about the marriage. <laughs> oh, oh man. man. Yeah. Tyrion decides that he will take this <laughs> on. Uh, oh, he has to do it in the worst way, too, dude. Yeah, dude. <laughs> This scene is impecca- impeccably well written. The way he goes, sometimes we wish we would have heard something under completely different yeah. circumstances. And uh, it's not uh, until we've yeah. heard the thing that we wish those were the circumstances in which we heard it under. And, and Sansa's like, yeah, I mean, okay. But it was clearly not, that was yeah. not directed to Sansa whatsoever. Well, no, not at all. And Sansa's both, like, both, Sansa's though, like but it's really not a big deal yeah, that yeah, here. It'll be it's fine. It's okay. Yeah, I don't under, yeah, well, okay. Um, but uh, it's, oh, uh, it was so good. Like, like, okay, Sansa, yeah, I'd like to speak to you alone. Shay, what? Why do you want to be, you know, like, so Sansa's like, oh, Shay. Well, hey, Shay, no, it's okay. Like, I don't, like it's how sh- s- clueless Sansa is, mm-hmm. you know? And then, uh, like, we know what Tyrion's about to say, and it's already awkward, but it's just ten times better that Shay is right there. Um, it's and, oh, man, I, I don't know. I, I didn't remember him actually <laughs> saying, do we get, does, do we go back? No, or is it just it, it's just assumed we never see. He just goes, "Okay, oh, this is going to be awkward," yeah. <laughs> and then we cut, and it's like uh, you like know exactly uh, what he's about to tell her. But uh, uh, so we don't we don't actually get no. I mean, like in a later episode, do they actually have that conversation, or is it just assumed that he told her? Um, oh, they have it. They have it here now because uh, they they, it's not on screen. They, we never see that. Uh, oh, that okay. Yeah, that's what. Okay, that's what yeah. I'm but. Uh, yeah, because we see her later on watching Peter's boat go away. Ah, that's and right. That's why she's sobbing. Oh, duh. duh, that's and why she's crying. <laughs> yeah, oh, she's God. like, she's like, wow, I really missed my opportunity there, didn't I? Uh, oh, duh. Uh, oh my God. Yeah, I, I, because I was like, I thought it was, I didn't piece together. For wow, that's so sad. I, I thought that she's crying is like 
she's missing her chance to leave and that she's missing her chance to like leave early with Littlefinger. And I just didn't piece it together that like, no, she can't leave because she has to marry Tyrion now and that she's staying mm-hmm. and like that's why she's staying and can't leave. Not yeah. that she made the choice not to go herself. Yeah, no. no. And like oh It's because now she is stuck. Yeah, now she, yeah. she should have taken that way out when it was presented. <laughs> well um, let's see. If she went there with Littlefinger right now, would it actually have been better for her? Let's think. Because he he wants an army. He wants to fight. Littlefinger's ready. Like the minute he get he I got one ship and now I want five. Now I want ten. It's such a weird thing. Like he he's he's wanting to go. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I think him if Sansa's with Littlefinger right now, I don't know. He's very I don't know. It's maybe I think, not uh, actually better. I don't think it would have been good for her long term. Um because either he delivers her to the Riverlands and she dies at the Red Wedding or he just keeps her at the Vale until what happens happens because eventually she escapes and goes to the Vale with him and then he pawns her off on Ramsay. That's true. So I guess he even, yeah. Like one way or the other, it either goes as bad as it already did or it goes worse and she dies. So I guess the only real change is that she wouldn't have got to see Joffrey die. Yeah. Really. And I'm, I'd rather her see Joffrey die and take his last breath yeah. and then leave. Right. She actually, she got to see full. Yeah, she all was of there. It, right. All yeah, of it. There. Yeah. She didn't have to run before. And like, she got to see him remember. actually I die. die. Specifically. Um, Cause I know all chaos, you know, it all kind of breaks loose. Yeah. But I think Sansa watches him like take his, I think there's I even think a he, shot. Like, falls. like, I think it even shows her react to his death. Like, like kind of like, I don't know. Like, I think there's a shot of maybe even showing her like after he's dead sort of thing. I right. Don't know. But no, cause, uh, I think they take the opportunity of the chaos that ensues as he's get her out of there. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I think, I think he's there until she, I think she's there until he collapses and then then her Tontos pulls up and it's like, Hey, come on. But she knows, she knows, I guess. So she didn't actually, okay. okay. She gets her, she gets her nice little killing a guy who tortured her moment a little later on in the series. But, uh, Mm. regardless, uh, later on. Lord Varys finds Peter Baelish in the throne room for what mm. is my favorite scene of the episode. Yeah. And it's kind of the overlay of things happening here because we won't get to the end of the scene, but I consider it a part of the scene. Uh, ah, but, okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Totally agree with you. Um, okay, cool. But later on, Lord Varys finds Peter in the throne room and Varys and Baelish discuss the Iron Throne. Mm-hmm. And the pageantry of it and the propaganda that creates nations and cements dynasties, you know. It's, they say it is forged of a thousand swords. It's not even 200. I've counted. And uh, mm-hmm. Urs is like, well, yeah, I guess it does have a certain kind of appeal, doesn't it? It's all and, a uh, lie. <laughs> it is all a lie. Oh, and Varys asserts that, you know, he serves the realm. But Baelish is like, ah, oh, the realm. What do you think that is? And Baelish tells Varys that he is aware of Varys' arrangement with Roz. Mm. He's given her to a friend who is eager for a new experience. And Baelish revels in the chaos that he has caused. He doesn't think chaos is a pit, but a ladder for those brave enough to climb. And as Varys and everyone else sees it, they they can't... They, Peter is on an impeccable, like, good luck streak for him. <laughs> Things are going his way, that's for yeah, sure. For, like, seasons. There's not a bad thing that happens to Peter until he fucking dies. Well, I guess that could just be he he's pulling a lot of strings. Yeah. yeah you know, and, it, and a lot of things, like, lucky people, they put themselves in lucky situations. Yeah. They may, you know, it's like, you no, have yeah, to... I don't, yeah, like, I don't mean he's lucky. I mean, like, make he makes... own luck, like, sort of thing. Like, I don't know, it's, you gotta, you gotta put yourself in that situation to even be, cons- you know, but I yeah. mean, there are probably some things that happen that he didn't do that are pretty lucky to have. No, yeah, I just, I just mean that like, uh, even but, if, hmm. even if it's not luck, obviously, I don't think it is on most, most occasions. He is one of those people who is so fucked up. He's willing to do whatever to put him, put himself in those situations. Mm-hmm. Like 
give Roz to Joffrey because Joffrey wants to kill someone. That's yeah. that's what he wants. Yeah, yeah, that's that was just rough. I I, I didn't and, know it happened this soon. I, I it was yeah. I was actually kind of taken by shock a little bit. I'm like, wait, no, that's the end of her story. Like, it's mm-hmm. kind like did Littlefinger know from the start that Roz went to Varys? And I think so, you know, so he figured it out. And mm-hmm. then once he figured it out, he's like, OK, then now you're no purpose to me. Now I have you killed. That's why he said that you're a bad investment. Not that yeah. it was his plan from the start. No, like, yeah, no. So it was he. Fi- OK, OK. Yeah, he figured that out at some point, which is why he's like, uh, I've heard like uh, your friend or whatever, like our mm-hmm. our mutual friend or whatever the fuck. But this also furthers that Joffrey is an even bigger dumbass than previously thought. Um, you go to a man who is notoriously the biggest spy in the realm and go, I feel like killing somebody. He's the king. In his mind, he's probably like, well, I can just do this, though. No, 100%. So, like, you mean, like, to keep it a secret? You mean, like, yeah, to keep no, it on the down low? There's no way, like, there's just no way around what the interaction had to be. You know, like he had to have gone to Littlefinger or sent someone to Littlefinger, which is arguably worse. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, and gone, Wait. I would like to try killing. Can you provide me someone to kill? Wait. Was it Joffrey that sought out Littlefinger first? Or was it like Littlefinger that put it, put in the idea in his head and then he's like, yeah. Like, let's, so, like, I don't know, like... I guess it could have been either way, but the way that... I guess, I thought it was more implied that, like, uh, Littlefinger needed to get rid of Roz, and he pitched this new experience, you know, like, <clears throat> he pitched the experience to Joffrey, sort of thing, mm. and that he was, like, willing to try the new experience and kill, you know, sort of thing. I, no, I, guess, I guess I could see that. That that That's the thing. Because it is very like, convenient for Joffrey to want to kill I guess <clears throat> I don't know. Uh because it was it was to kill Roz, you know. That, that's like, how it worked to, to make the example benefit. to Varys yeah. and like to, to you know to have his you know so he could have that badass evil character moment and drop the line. But like I think it was I think like he knew Roz betrayed him and he's like okay I need to kill you. Um how can I do this without just putting an arrow, not a gun, they don't have guns, you know, without just chopping her head off or poisoning her. I don't know, maybe just... The way that, yeah, Hmm. I get get what you're saying, though, because, like, it is is convenient timing. The way that I took it was that Littlefinger probably doesn't presume to make suggestions to the king. Like, maybe you should try killing somebody, man. Mm, That's fair, yeah. How do you bring Uh, that up? Yeah, yeah that's my think? thing. Is that I have the feeling Joffrey, and he might have been coded about it. He might have been like, I kind of want to try something new, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and then it's not exactly easy to find someone who, like, Littlefinger's a smart enough motherfucker to go, well, I'm going to wait until I have a reason for somebody to be murdered. Ah. Uh, uh, so he, I him. see. So it's not that, like, Roz betrayed him, and then Joffrey came up to him at the perfect time and said, "I want to no. try this new experience." It could I'm have been. It could have been before. Is, and yeah, because like, I'm assuming Littlefinger's like the way that interaction mm-hmm. typically goes. I'm imagining is like, well, you know, I'll I'll do my best. I'll find somebody. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I just can't just promise you anyone right now. Yeah, you know, I can't. I can't tell you there's going to be someone there tonight. You know, like uh, not a lot mm-hmm. of people lining up to get killed. Um, yeah. impaled by arrows. That's not exactly something anybody wants. But uh, oh, yeah, but the way that scene caps yes. with him saying like a uh, chaos is a ladder, and like only the bravest will climb. There's nothing but the climb, and then it's the the last stake north of the wall getting put on the top of the wall. I was like, oh, that's hard, and it goes into John and Egret kissing on top of the mountain. I was like, yeah, that's dope. That's dope. I and like that. And the image, then what he says to like some people get knocked down and never get back up, and it's you know the the void consumes them, but like. John and 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 mm. and Egret stuck on and kept going, kept climbing. I don't know. It was just the whole. It was the whole. I don't know if it's my scene. I don't know if I want to give him the performance. I don't know out of this because, like, I like the scene, but more for like what it's implying for like the whole show. 
you know. And so maybe it's just the scene, actually. Maybe that just makes the most sense. Um, I don't know. It's like, uh, I think he monologued his, you know, a- a- Aiden. Yeah, Aiden Gillen. Uh, yeah. He did pretty well here. This was, I, I just created one of the most iconic monologues yeah, of the entire show this, here. And that people still use this quite often. This episode had a um, bunch of those where it was like, yo, I remember like not monologues, but lines where like people call mm-hmm. back to it seasons later, like, like, uh, Ramsey. If you think this has a happy ending, yeah. you haven't been paying attention. Yeah. There's a, uh, okay. Wow. Um, and then my yeah, favorite definitely. line, we, which we will get to before long, but, uh, gets called yeah. back to later on in the show, think... too, and became a big deal for theories and stuff. You know, like, everyone was like, Chaos is a ladder. Peter is uh, at the top of his game. He's going to figure out... You know, like, there were so many theories about all these different things regarding all these different lines. I remember a crux for a bunch of theories was like, there's no way this ends good. You know, I remember that line Ramsey said, if you think this has mm-hmm. a happy ending, you haven't been paying attention. There's like, there, I remember that being a regarded as, like, a reason a long time ago that mm-hmm. the show wouldn't have a happy ending. But, uh, I think I think I'll I'll maybe wait on the scene just to see because there is there is another scene that might take it but I mm. think I will give Aiden Gillen the performance here like that that monologue that. was it was he plays his character so well even though like I hate and don't agree with his character it's just like he's so no, he's good so at good it. at it he's, he's so, so good, good at it so yeah I think okay I'll I'll put that nail in and I'll give him the performance but yeah the scene still up there because yeah you I gave it to you, and I don't know I think we might be able to to spread the love a little more I get you I get you. Yeah, but then uh, we'll head to the Riverlands after that. We're in the hideout of the Brotherhood without banners. Uh, and Guy is trying to train Arya Stark with a bow. And, uh, you know, she, he teaches her about never holding. Always just pull it to the chin and release. Trust your eyes. Your eyes will do the aiming. But I have to aim. Never aim. It, it, never yeah. never hold. What? I have to hold. I have to aim. Never aim. And it's, oh, everything you thought you knew. Yeah. You know, you're wrong. This is a master, like a master archer. This feels like a side quest, you know, where you learn right, archery. Right. Or like she's just going, mastering her archery skill out. Something like that. But, oh, I don't but know. Yeah, before this... long, she spots someone behind, the, uh, behind her target, the target that she hit in the face, tits, balls. I got them mm. right where I want them. You know, uh, there there was another line that that could that's in the running there. Um, I don't know. It was pretty good, you know. And, and she thought she she's delivered the slam dunk, but then there's another you know a lesson that she was taught after yeah. that. Like, well, they're going to be moving. It's not going to be straw men. It's not going to be you know all that. But but that line I don't know is pretty good. Um, I have I have a few uh, for lines. It's either the the rare enough thing, a man who lives up to his reputation, uh, that one, and then and we got one more left. Okay, cool. Uh, but but yeah, I'll, I, I think it's the last one. Sadly, is the uh, thing. The last one is just a hell of a line. Um, gotcha. But gotcha. I wanted to give these two. They were, they were thought of. That's for sure. Um, no, yeah, they deserve that too. You know, I, uh, I actually went with uh, a line that comes up later in this scene or this series of events mm. with, uh, with them. But uh, Ooh, okay. Uh, she see, Arya spots Melisandre and a group of Stannis Baratheon's men coming up in the rear, and she speaks to Thoros in uh, High Valyrian. Melisandre does, demanding to know what uh, became of his mission to convert Robert Baratheon to the worship of the Ward of the Lord of Light. And he's like, "Well, didn't go well. In fact, by the time I got here, I didn't even really believe in it myself. So sorry and shit." And yeah, I uh, fucked every whore in King's Landing too. He was like, <laughs> "Yeah, sad to say. Oh well." But that's that's the truth. He's like, that's just how it is. Um, I don't know. This, yeah, I mean, Thoros is getting my character not here because this good, good. just the backstory, everything here, him like talking and like I love how how uh, I don't know. You just have you have Thoros over here like kind of pouring his heart out and like telling his whole life story, and then um, what's his what's the Barrack? You know, Barrick, yeah, Barrick just kind of standing there for one, not understanding the first part of the conversation that's being in High Valyrian, you know, at the start. He's kind of just Valyrian. standing there like, you know, like, yep, I'm here and I've died and like I'm being used as an example right now. And then like yeah. eventually they start speaking English. And like, Melisandre's you know, like, how many times like, has he been brought yeah. back? It's like, pretty cool, pretty cool. She was like, impossible. She was like, what? You should not have this power. That, that's, I know it is... Uh, very interesting, like that. Thoros was sent on a mission from the High Priestess to mm. to 
what was it to get Robert off of off of his companions and lead him into the Lord of Light or something yeah, like that? Yeah. Like that was his mission, and he failed. You know, he he just stopped. But he got he went all the way to King's Landing though, and like he got yeah. there, yeah. and then I guess what's what did he? So he was just supposed to go there and just convince Robert by just talking to him, or like do things like. I'm assuming that the goal was to make Thoros of Mir like their high septon. They like ah. that's what that is what the that is what the red priests wanted makes for sense. Thoros was to go and convince the seven kingdoms that they need to take in the Lord of Light as their one true god. And uh okay. Kind of the way the High Sparrow does here in a couple seasons, the way he reignites yeah. the fire. Okay, with light okay, and that makes more sense. Um Okay. But that that was the that was the general goal, and then I think what's kind of funny is that like Thoros on his way there realized just how godless the world was. Like he he thought this place fucking sucks. If there is a god, he goddamn hates us. You know what I'm saying? Like I think I guess that's it took what... his friend dying and coming yeah. back to life to make him be like, all right, well, yep, I can believe in it now. Exactly. You know, like, you know he's yeah. like, I didn't believe in shit. I just said the words because they're the only words I knew. And he was my friend, and he died. And he came back, and that's when I knew our God is the one true God. And uh, she's like, "Dub, dub, 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 dub." Okay, so we got, we need some. Uh. Yeah, this is all cool and all. A great little check in, great little chat. Actually, I'm just here for for a boy. Yeah, um, give me Gendry. Yep, that's all I want. See you later. I'll give you two big bags of gold for him, though. Yeah. Um, yeah. And Arya's <laughs> like, Arya's not a fan of this idea. You know, she he wants to join you. You said you're a brotherhood, and he wanted to join you. And it sucks, really, like, revisiting this after the monologue Gendry had, like, an episode or two ago, where he's like, they're a family, you know? They chose their leaders, and, like, yeah. I would like to be a part of that. And, and then, then they're just like, even the arrow tips, everybody. even the mm -hmm. arrow tips, the guy, arrow guy showing him, like, oh, yeah, I can make these. No, no, simple enough. Yeah, just give me the steel. And it's like, you see a future for him and the brotherhood, yeah. you know? They're still building it, even though, like, right before he's taken. And then he's so confused. He has Melisandre come up to him and be like, Oh, don't worry. You will be far. You, you, you are far more than these people could ever be. Yeah, you got to, in Gendry's mind, you got to think. He's it probably will like, fall at the will of kings, yeah. but you will make kings fall or whatever. You got to think. Fuck. You got to think. Gendry's probably just like, what the fuck does that? What, I'm still being captured and take like well, I'm still like he's he's probably so confused. He's like yeah. that doesn't make me feel in, any better. Yeah, I like, don't want to. I don't want to make kings fall, man. I just want a simple fucking yeah, life. Like, right? I, I was just wanted to be a blacksmith for the. For, <laughs> I just, what, what the fuck? I was just about to make some arrow tips, and now <laughs> now I'm about to. What are you talking about? Like, I, and you're still putting me in hand. Were they? Did they cuff him or like? Did they, they like just binded him? him I'm pretty yeah, sure. Yeah. So like they still. Yeah, it's like he's still feeling like a prisoner. So like, I'm gonna make kings fall, but now you're st I'm still a prisoner. You know, so like, yeah. what am I gonna do? Like, well, it's yeah, also confusing <laughs> to him because he knows people have been after him his whole life, but he still doesn't have any idea that he's a Baratheon bastard. You know, like he does not know that still. He's, he's just been. Yeah, he just thinks he people has have no it out for him for no <laughs> reason. <laughs> He's like, poor why has injury. why has this been Man. happening to me, bro? Wow, that poor dude. Yeah, he people just really have it out for him. Yeah, man, man. It's, it's a poor dude. But uh, Arya, you know, protests and even walks up to the Red Priestess, calls her a witch, and uh, this is the part where my favorite line comes into play uh, um, because it's line. extremely foreshadowy in all the best ways, and gets called back to in one of my favorite episodes of the entire show. Melisandre grabs her by the face and is like, I see a darkness in your eyes. And behind those eyes, I see eyes looking back at mine. Eyes of many colors. Brown eyes. Blue eyes. Green eyes. We will meet again. And then she just leaves and Arya's like, I have no idea what the fuck that means. What? Like, I love that any interaction with Melisandre leaves people just confused. Like, yeah, like okay. What the um, fuck? Sure. Yeah, I... Uh... Okay, and I mean, this is, you know, a lot of foreshadowy stuff here, you know, whether it was planned or not, you can say that she wears many different faces, mm -hmm. you know, and she's killed many different people, you know, she has mm -hmm. shut a lot of different eyes, that's for dang sure. Um, I wonder, because um, Melisandre, I feel like, I don't know, I wonder, because she sees stuff in the, in the, I, I'm, it's so cute, like her power is just so curious, you know, it's yeah. just like, and, and a lot of it's just magic, and it's not, you're not supposed to understand it, it's just, it's just how it is, 
Yeah, um, like what did she see in this moment? Was yeah. it just like did did she see that like she went on to actually become like a faceless man, you know, or like it, or do all that stuff and kill people or was it just like she just sees random things and you know and just is like, well, she yep. interprets them the best yeah. she can and stuff. Yeah. Like that's how I've always taken her power is that like while the Lord of Light will send her messages, they're not like Oh, word for word. I got this shit. She yeah. has to interpret that shit, which is why she thinks Stannis is the prince who was promised and the the will of the Lord and stuff like she does her best to interpret based off what she knows, but she can't do everything mm. all on her own, you know? So whenever it's season eight, episode three and Beric and the Hound deliver her to that room privately where Melisandre is already hanging out, knew exactly where she needed to be. And she tells her we met once. And I told you, he would shut many eyes forever. Brown eyes, green eyes. And then she looks at her and goes, and blue ones. And then Arya, like, like looks at her like, oh, I fucking get it. She's Danny DeVito, and it's always sunny in Philadelphia. I get it. I'm the chosen she, one? Yeah. I'm the chosen one? I'm going to do the coolest knife drop, little stabby stab. There and... is no spoon. <laughs> but, uh. Yeah, man, that, that I liked that scene a lot, and it leads mm. to some pretty compelling stuff, and that was my favorite line of the episode. She did uh, close some pretty important blue eyes, that's for yeah, sure. Yeah, um, some the... pretty important green eyes. Uh, Walter Frey has green eyes, I think. <laughs> so nice. it's like, there, there's like I think each one had like a particularly important character attached Brown. to it. Maybe the wave or something, I don't know. Ellen Payne, the Hound. Cersei. Cersei has green eyes, right? Green or yeah. blue. Something like that. Yeah. Oh, oh, we did. Any kill? No. Did she kill? She didn't kill anything. She didn't kill anybody. We did get a Hodor, though. A singular Hodor, yes. A single Hodor. Single. Uh, three episode drought, or drought. So it has has been a while. Been a uh, been a little bit since know, the last Hodor. Only three this season. Um,. Two are came less, in episode are two. less Hodors than I thought there would be in the show. We, I'm not gonna lie. Right, we were we were preaching more Hodors, less things, and and I don't turns know. out there's more things and less Hodors. A lot more things. Um. Yeah. Well, th these things happen, but uh, at Pull River Run, <laughs> Rob and his advisors meet with Black Walter and Lothar Frey to discuss an alliance for his planned attack on Casterly Rock and. The phrase are like, all right, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. We can keep doing this shit as long as you do all of this for me. So we need a formal apology. You got to say sorry to my pops. That's got to be first and foremost. He's like, yeah, he deserves as much. That's cool. He wants Hall, all of its lands and incomes. Is that cool with you? Uh, and he's like, fuck, yeah. After this war is done, I'm fighting for the north. I don't need Hall. He can have it. I don't give a shit. And uh, he's like, and now it's, he's like, is there something else I can do for you? They're like, not something, but someone <laughs> and realization dawns within edmir tully as he's like fucking a man do i get to pick at the very least can i pick and uh they're like no it is roslyn take it or leave it uh 19 edmir... to like oh, just how old is how old is edmir dudes like, yeah, gotta be like gotta 40. be 30s gotta be 30s like, i don't know close, youngest. pushing he's close to 40 yeah, he's like getting be. there that's okay. Maybe I was a little harsh on him. You're, yeah, he's like probably mid thirties. Maybe like yeah. You know. Catelyn's younger brother or youngest brother, you know, because the Blackfish is his older brother, which is funny to think about. Or not older brother. He was the king's brother, so he's his uncle. Um, or not the king's brother. Uh, Catelyn's father's yeah. brother. She's Catelyn. He's Catelyn's uncle. So he's Edmure's uncle. Um, but Edmure is Rob's uncle, so that's what was confusing me. But uh, hmm. regardless, um, hmm. okay, Edmure's not that. kind to the idea. He says he won't do it, and we're like, you got to be a big old fucking idiot if you think I'm going to let that happen. Hmm. You are going to marry him. You're going to marry her, and I know it's my fault. I know you're paying for my sins. I won't forget it. But you have to do this, or else we will lose. That's a guarantee. Oh. And. Uh, there was a line before that that was delivered by Blackfish yeah. that uh, is my line for the episode. Um, and, I don't know, Edmure says something about, like, the law it clearly the states, yeah, yeah, the law clearly states that I can I can choose my own bride and I shouldn't be compelled to, 
her to choose for me, and then Blackfish comes in and says, the laws of my fist are about to compel your teeth. And <laughs> he said it way better than I did, that's for sure. Compel, oh, my God. Compel your teeth. Uh, the Blackfish, man, when we get him, it's he's dope. just... Yeah, like, he just sat there the whole time. He he got up after Edmure got up, and he, he just delivered... You know, he's just like, all right, let me let me just tell you it straight real quick. Let me Let me... Give you a lesson real quick, bud. And oh, and every uh, time I love when Rob calls him uncle because it's just like I know Edmure doesn't like that. He doesn't like being reminded that this is his nephew and he's so much more powerful than he is, and he's so much stronger and better and pretty much every way. He's just like like he goes uncle. I know, and I can just tell Edmure's like fucking god damn, damn. fuck. The sawmill. Or He's what, getting what was bossed around by his older sister's son. And, you know? Uh, the stone mill or whatever. Yeah, his mill. big The yeah, Battle of Stone Mill. You remember that great victory? <laughs> Dude just gets put down, man. The whole time. Ah, uh, yeah. He, does he? Let's see. He doesn't He's actually Christmas. die. He right? doesn't die at the Red Wedding. Because he's off with his, off with his wife. And they yeah. already left. He goes off with his something. bride, and then he's kept yeah. as a prisoner by the phrase for, like, seasons. Like. Wow. Really? Yeah, he's just, like, in the dungeons of the phrase for, like, years. Um, We never and see him. He just Ari... tells that story later on. Oh. Really? Yeah, he's he makes just... it to the end of the show. He never dies. Oh, yeah, that's right. He does make it to the end. That's so, he's so forgettable. That's so sad. Yeah. But. He's not important enough to kill, you know? Like. So, like, when Arya is... went went there and like killed all the phrase like he didn't even pop up then like as no, like, I don't free think the so. prisoner. he just showed up at the end like hey i'm here yeah i think so wow that's nuts that's actually hilarious yeah he might show up he might show up once or twice before that but I, not much as far as i remember huh. yeah uh, i don't remember any anything yeah. that dude i didn't even remember him showing up at the end so yeah i just i just remember him showing up at the end because it's the funniest fucking scene just they're telling looking for her the, they're looking for the new king, and he's like, I will bear this burden. Ah, finally, my chance. My chance to stand up and... And, and Sansa and, goes, sit down, uncle. Shut the fuck up, dude. Sit, sit, sit down. Uncle, what please sit. Oh, uh, yeah. He's like, that is... You are off the table here. Nobody is going to pick Edmure Tully for the king of the Seven Kingdoms. I'm sorry, good sir. <sighs> oh, uh, man. But uh, nevertheless, at, Ar- at Heron Hall next... Bruce Bolton is sitting to dinner with Jamie and Brienne of Tarth, where Bolton tells Jamie he will send him to King's Landing as restitution for his lost hand, but only under the condition that Jamie swear to tell his father that Bolton was not personally responsible for his maiming. Mm. And Jamie assumes that Brienne will accompany him, but Bruce intends to keep her with him under arrest for abetting treason. It was Ruh-roh. a nice quick scene, but uh, mm-hmm. it was really well done the way Jamie's struggling to cut his steak and Brianna has to, yeah. yeah just gets pissed gets fed up and she's like all right I'll help you whatever um he's like I this... noticed that you could have done all you could have sent me back you could have done anything but instead you're watching me fail at dinner mm. yeah, the, the, his words I loved it um uh, yeah not doing too hot but I, no, I don't know it's... high spirits though which I appreciate you know he's still joking a little bit in a I, I like mm. I like Jamie at this point and a little bit more. Brienne than hating think. the clothes that she has on too. Oh. Like, oh, I can see they finally got you some suitable or something suitable for you to wear, and she just goes, "Yeah, they did," or something like that. Like yeah. she was like, "Yeah, <laughs> yep, they did." Yeah. Um, and I don't know. Next episode, that's Baron Maiden Fair. Um, next yep. episode. So I knew as soon as I saw this fun. dress, I was like, "That's yeah. the one she gets tossed into a bear pit yeah. in." Yeah. So um, I don't know. That's the be... bear and the maiden fair, but, but uh, yeah, that's a uh, that's a goodie. But that concludes the story in the Riverlands. We've only got two locations left, both of which pretty short, little, quick going. So mm-hmm. in the north, tensions rise between Osha and Mira uh, as they argue about who's a better hunter and how to skin a rabbit and et cetera, mm. et cetera. They're just they're <laughs> they're they're measuring dicks. You know, it's very funny. Um. And Bran's like, guys, chill Come the fuck out. On. He's like, I can't walk. I can't do anything. I just hear you guys argue all the time. You and guys. Mira extending the, the olive branch. You know, y- your way of skinning rabbits is faster. 
She goes, mm. yes, it is. And <laughs> the way Bran, yeah. the way Bran goes, Osha, Osha come yeah. on, yeah, yeah. It's, he's like just being like the parent right now, which is, yeah. which is, I don't know. And I think was it being? I don't know. I felt like maybe it was intercut with something, but like you two just always fight. Or maybe I'm just thinking of the Mandalorian so much right now of how like factions are being brought together and how Bran is like mm. having two enemies, you know, a wildling and, and some, I don't know. A Northman, just, yeah. Yeah, someone not up north of the wall uh, getting along. Um, but I don't know, I, lo- I just, that's maybe just why he becomes the king at the end, you know? He's just, uh, he, all this fighting is, is not, it's useless, you know? You're, we're out here surviving, you know, and you're, you're arguing about how, who can skin a rabbit better, hmm. you know, at the end of the day, and we're just trying to go north. And I don't know, I think... Uh, these visions and stuff are just like how much is Bran really? I don't. It's just during. Is he uh, already the king? You know, and he just is is instilling his kingly stuff already. You know, like no, is is that the no. is that the thing? Like, nah, it's a, this is uh this is all him at this point. But it's all his va- like it's all his experiences and it's all what he learned. You know, he's learning right. I guess this is his his experience stage this isn't mm. it's what he learns here that makes him the king or i guess he put himself there it's also i just never know how to talk about it or to yeah, think about he, uh, it i don't but, think he put himself there by any means but a season like this reminds me of why when at the in the finale whenever Tyrion goes and who has a better story than Bran the Broken? I remember being like, I'm sorry. What? Um, Jon Snow. Yeah, uh, Jon Snow has the best story <laughs> in this fucking show. The Song um, of Ice and Fire. Is it yeah, but, I guess both, but... Over the course of seasons 3, 4, 5, and 6, a series of 40 episodes, he is in... 15 and man of those 15 i bet like five of them are for a single scene that only lasts two minutes yeah so it's like god damn man you really could have done a little and he's not in season five that's the... <laughs> <laughs> he's in season three four and six wow uh, yeah that's and don't, don't get know. me wrong i do enjoy his story and stuff and it is when he is on screen and they are expressing his experience it is pretty compelling but I I think they just I think they just missed many opportunities. I think that D and D took the opportunity to whittle down Bran's story because they thought John was going to be the fucking king, and then they were like, "Oh, fuck, okay, I'm like shit." We should have really focused on this three eyed Raven storyline a little more, huh? Yeah, yeah, and not like because like, <laughs> out of forty episodes in the middle of the show, the show is seventy six episodes long or something like that. It's not long. You know, it's not a super long show or 76. Yeah, 76. Yeah, 10, 6. And what's it's 6 or 7 and it's 60. 10 and 73. Then 73. 7 and 6, right? Yeah. The last two? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 73 episodes. For he's in 40 out of the 73, which isn't bad. That's a pretty good that's a pretty good percentage. Um but to be in 15 out of the 40 middle episodes. Yeah, that's pretty beefy. That's that's a lot of stuff you're not a part of. Um, and I get I get it. You know, he was off. He was off doing stuff. He was a busy man. Uh, but like. Hmm. You scroll down the IMDb cast list and it's like Peter Dinklage, 67 episodes, Lena Headey, 62, Amelia Clark, 62, Kid Harrington, 62, Sophie Turner, 59, Macy Williams, 59, Nikolaj Colster Waldau, 55, Ian Glenn, 52, John hmm. Bradley, 48, Alfie Allen, 47, Conleth Hill, 46, wow. Liam Cunningham, Davos, 42. Davos was in more episodes than Bran Stark. Gwendolyn Christie, 42, Brienne of Tarth, Aiden Gillen, 41, Isaac Hempstead Wright, Bran Stark, 40. Wow. He was in two more episodes than The Hound, two more episodes than Masande, two more episodes than Braun, and five more episodes than Podrick. The Hound? I could, I'd actually wager The Hound might have more screen time than Bran, even though he's in less oh, episodes. I, would I, say- I, almost, I almost guarantee it, actually. Yeah, um, I would too. 
That's wow. That's kind of that's really w- weird to think about now. It's a wild. It's a wild, and that and that's why. Don't get me wrong. I think that like Bran is the natural choice. Like he can see literally everything. There is no enemy that can surprise him. That's the it's choice. It's just clear. It, it, you have him be the king, and then but you just have the humans be the council because he's no longer that, a human. He is. I think that the fucking reasoning behind it was hilarious to say he has the best story of them all. No, it's just ah, uh, it's just the the tactical. Like it's just the the smart decision. You you, I don't know. Like why would you want the person? I, I, I don't. It's just yeah. It's just what you do. And right. they, they could have. I don't understand why they didn't just play it like that. You know. Yeah. I don't um, know. But regardless, um, he diffuses the situation right as Jojen begins to have a seizure uh, from mm-hmm. his uh, from his visions. Uh, little uh, little motherfucker Stark. Um, fucking kid, fucking guy. What's his name? Rickon. Rickon. Rickon is incredibly appalled. That is a scary. It is a scary sight. Uh, watching somebody have a seizure. That's not a. That's freaky. No, no matter how old you are. Yep. Um, not fun. No, no. Um, I'll never. I'll never forget. I was at football practice once, and uh, I was playing uh, mock quarterback during a fake offense, and one of the linemen who was standing straight up just fell straight down on his back and started seizing. And I was like, uh, "No, he's he was kind of a jokester, so nobody thought he was being for oh, real." And then it was no. like, and then very quickly it was like, "Oh no, yeah, this is a fucking thing." Uh, he was uh, fine, thankfully, but like that was horrifying. I remember yeah. that very vividly. I was like. So, wow, that's scary. That is a yeah, freaky no. sight. Yeah, a lot of uh, a misconception. A lot of people think that you're supposed to like keep their mouth open so they don't bite their tongue off. Like, do not put your mouth, your hands near anyone's mouth that's having anything like that. They will bite your hand off. Like yeah. that is, they don't, they, have, they have no control over their jaw, and it is seizing, and it is going to bite down. Um, yeah. But if you do have a leather strap, yes, that is perfect. That is like this is the ideal situation. Mira came prepared. Um, yeah, they uh-huh. they know they like they and this happens you know quite often yeah. I guess. Yeah, the vision um, takes their toll. Yeah, Mira this is says. she does exactly what you're supposed to do, which is sad. You just have to kind of let it happen and just mm-hmm. kind of hold them there and keep something in their mouth if you have something, but not yeah. your hand. Don't ever do no, that. Do not do that. Oh. Uh, Jojen wakes up and tells Bran that he saw Jon Snow on the wrong side of the wall, surrounded by enemies. Mm-hmm. What's cool about this is that could be exactly what's happening at that moment with him preparing to climb the wall. And it could also be season seven, episode five, beyond the wall, when he is literally in the middle of the ice, surrounded by White Walkers. So there's like no telling exactly what he saw. There's just like he's on the wrong side of the wall. He's surrounded by enemies. And it's And I feel like Jojen's visions are a little more I don't know. Are they exactly the same as Bran? And, like, he is seeing... You know, because when Bran has, like, a three-eyed raven vision, and he's, like, seeing, like, Ned, and, like, that, like, the R and L plus J, like, event play out. Mm-hmm. Like, he's seeing the event happen he's right then and there. And he and he's there, you know? But, like, is Jojen just kind of, like, is it, like, an in- interpretation thing? Or is it is it, like, he's also right there, like, seeing it? Um, I think they try to portray it as sim- as like the same thing. Um, so it is the same? Because Bran's but, not quite the Three-Eyed Raven yet, so he's not having like those visions. But they're still just like... They're visions that are, aren't are like actual events in time, but like because he still had a... He had a vision of Rob, John, and... Yeah. Whoever like just when he was shooting, you know, arrows and him walking around... So it's yeah, like I think it's I think it is more something to be interpreted than it is to be like oh well this is what's happening, um, okay. So yeah, I think uh, I think I'm on board with that. But it's time for question time. <gasps> uh oh, question time. time. Let's this go. one's uh, it's actually not trivia. This is uh, this is incredibly subjective. It's whatever it's whatever you're feeling. I want to know what your guilty pleasure entertainment is. Something. That people make you feel like you are not supposed to enjoy, that you can't help but like. Oh. And if you need time to think on it, we can keep going, and you can you can come back to me with an answer. Uh, and this is this is a, a movie you like that you feel like you're not supposed to a series of movies, 
uh, a musical group or song or artist, um, a TV show, any of that. Any of that is a fair game. One one of them, though. No, I don't. And if you have a few, rattle them off. I don't care. But uh, okay, hmm. I'm gonna have to think on this one a little bit. Actually, okay. no, nothing's popping out immediately. I, the only thing that popped out immediately was the song Fireflies. Whenever it came out, everyone hated it, but I actually really liked it. I, um, and I, I never understood the hate for it. So, like, that was the only thing that popped out immediately, but not. I didn't. believe your um, eyes. Yeah, no. okay. I like, and I was also just young at the time, too. And oh, yeah, was, I was yeah, too. It's a very target audience for that song, probably. Well. Um, but hmm, that doesn't feel that doesn't feel like my answer. That was like younger. I don't know. This is not that's not a current. I don't listen to it now, you know. Um, hmm. I think that's fair though. A weird thing that a lot of people say is weird. It's not really. I guess I go crazy for like just long YouTube videos of anything that's just being taken apart. Hmm. Like specifically a, a watch, like a like a just a mechanical watch. A watch. Yeah. Just a dude takes it apart, puts it in a clean machine, puts it back together. That's all that happens. That's it. Satisfying. It is, it, I don't like, and I don't even use it just to follow. Sometimes that's just if I'm eating, I'll just that's what I put on. I don't know. Sure. Um, so I guess that could be seen as not normal. Um, but but you don't feel like that's not guilty, guilty though. I don't feel guilty for that. No, I don't. Yeah, feel guilty and like for that. that's that's how I am. I don't I don't feel guilt for a lot of the things I enjoy. I do. I'll, I can give you what my answer to this question is for the mm -hmm. example because. Okay. I don't feel guilt for enjoying it because I do have my reasons, but pretty universally, uh, chain smokers music is not, is not enjoyed by most. I thoroughly enjoy the chain smokers and I always have, uh, now I do think there's a reason here. I think that their hot streak was when I was 14 to 18. Um, and they made music that was supposed to be a montage of high school summer events i feel like that's like what their music was for yeah. and i felt like i related to it hard time. so i still get very nostalgic for chain smokers music and i tend to enjoy it i haven't listened to any of it in like several years mm. uh new stuff i'll go back and listen to their old shit though you know i was just listening to closer by uh your baby pull me closer mm -hmm. in the backseat of oh, yeah. dude Bang. fucking love that song, fucking love that song. so yeah, yeah. Uh, chain smokers. Uh, I very rarely met anyone who would go, "Yeah, that's cool." Um, so that's that's my example. Is that I really like chain smokers, and that's my that's my guilty pleasure. Okay, I'll keep it on the back burner, I guess, for right now. But I, I gotta think. I feel like there's a movie or a, or a show that I'm just missing that I I can't think of right now. I get um, that. I get that. Now, yeah, you you think on that. And if, uh, if the answer comes to you, you just let me know. But, anywho, still in the north. Elsewhere, the cleaning boy awakens Theon Greyjoy to continue torturing him, and the boy threatens to remove Theon's pinky finger in what is more, one of the more graphic, disgusting events of uh, this entire show. Yeah, uh-uh. Yeah, I, I've, I've learned uh, to put away food when the oh, yeah. comes on screen. Oh, uh, yeah. And just back in, in this area. Because I think I was eating, like, even just goldfish or something yeah. during this episode. And then I, oh, I hear, I think, is it, does it start with Ramsey, like, sitting in the chair? Does it start? Oh, yeah, it starts with the horn. It's yeah. literally like a horn. And I'm like, oh, yep, time to put the food away. I literally was like, yeah. alarm for food to be put away. Yeah, because um, yeah, that, that, was, that, was, that was not. Take it off. Soon. Take it off. I win. <laughs> oh um, man. And it like even got like even got like me to be like, oh like oh I felt like my pinky kind of yeah, like you know. Shit, yeah, man. it's like, like, like I'm it, like, oh uh, like, like my hands like do this. Uh, like, I, yeah. I get the claw going. I'm like yeah. Uh, uh, uh. yeah, no no, I was and oh dude. Yeah, that's dude, that's just Yeah, he's like, so here's the game. Um sake, man. Yeah, if you can guess where we are and who I am. I will not cut off your pinky. Uh, then that's that's how you win. Um, if I win, uh, you have like the only way I win is if you beg me to take your pinky off. Sound cool? And he's like, yeah, I guess. Fuck, I don't think I'm really in a position to negotiate. Uh, and after rolling off a few uh, guesses, he guesses that he is uh, in Carhold and he is the younger brother of Torin Carstark, Richard Carstark's son. You are torturing me because your father is a bannerman of uh of my brother 
and or not my brother of Rob and he wants revenge. And he's like, ah, damn. And I, I forgot that like this moment would have convinced us on the first watch because we just watched Rickard Karstark get murdered. And it's yeah. like, oh, now he's torturing someone who was close yeah. to Rob. And it's like, you know, like, like, oh, OK, yeah, I could see that. OK. So yeah. You just gotta and he's like, yeah. you forgot one thing. You forgot to ask me if I'm a liar. And then uh, he goes ahead and keeps on. <laughs> God. What? Um, what was happening there? What, what like, what did he do? Yeah. He cut a slit in his pinky, and he was taking his bone okay. out of That's what I thought. skin. That's what yeah. I thought. Wanted to make sure I had a firm grasp on what was occurring. Yeah. I did, that's, and it was terrible. And that's why he said to cut it off, because I, if that were to happen, I mean, yeah. I mean, that's just... Ooh, cut just that motherfucker that off. That I'm point. done. Yeah, that's... Stick a fork in me, homie. Uh-uh. Yeah, that's... Uh-uh. Whew! That's uh-uh. bad. I don't like the way that makes me feel. Uh, yep. yeah, but, uh, yeah. 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 Theon's finger goes ahead and gets cut off, which is good. <laughs> um, and he's like, uh, you forgot to ask me why, you know, it's, this is happening to you for no greater reason than I like it. And I enjoy it. Um, I win. Yeah. I, uh, there will inevitably be a performance mm. given to, uh, Ramsey Bolton's uh, actor, Ewan, Rion. He is a very, very talented man at being completely demented. Mm, you know, I, just not this episode quite yet. But, no. Uh, no. But he, yeah. Eventually, I mean, he, pretty big character. Uh, that's for, I don't know. I, I can't wait just to also see him, well, I guess we don't see it, but we hear him get eaten by his dogs. Uh, those hungry, hungry dogs yeah. get sicked on him. That's nice. That's just a nice, a nice memory that I have. Um, seeing him go, but yeah, man, does he do a lot of bad before he goes? Um, of what I remember, and I don't remember much of his storyline, but I do remember no, some things I mean, that he like did. he and does nothing but bad things. That's all he does. He's, I remember uh, Reek. I mean, Reek's pretty big, but I feel like there's just the son. Like I remember Sansa. Yeah. I remember that, and that that was just... That's about all I remember, too. Um, I think maybe that's actually it. It's probably just that, yeah, because it's just Reek until the song. He storyline, writes right? the absolute coldest letter I've ever heard in my life to Jon Snow to try and get him to come fight him at Winterfell. Hmm. He says something about how, I have your brother, come and see. And he keeps he keeps ringing it back around to, come and see, come and see. He's like... He, Come here, buddy. Like, I'm ready. Let's fucking fight. Wow. You know, uh, and Jon Snow ends up sunning his ass. So it's fan- it's fantastic. Uh, oh, 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 that's, that's still three seasons away. But yeah, God, that's, a, that's, that's, a, that's a ways. But oh, that'll man. be good. But uh, yeah, we'll top off this episode where this episode actually began beyond the wall with Samwell and Gilly stopping to camp during their journey to the wall after having fled Craster's Keep, and Sam shows Gilly the dragon glass dagger he found at the Fist of the First Men. <laughs> it's ancient. Look at well, what I, I found. I think it's ancient. Buried treasure. Yeah. What does it do? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It looks cool, though, it doesn't it? Cool, though. <laughs> it will come in handy here before long. Very much so. Uh, but yeah, he tells her about Castle Black and then sings the Song of the Seven for her, which she actually quite enjoys. It was the first oh, nice cute. little cute moment. Yeah, wasn't that, yeah. Baby fell asleep. Yeah. Uh, Gilly, I don't know, just the nice. You know, doesn't know how to make a fire very well, uh, which was which was funny. But I don't know though. Hey, breathe. Yeah, they're they're get they're, they're cute. Starting to get cute now. Um, yeah, that's real cute. But uh, at the camp base, at the base of the wall, uh, the wildling party led by Tormund prepare to climb and Jon Snow and Egret, my favorite character of the episode, Egret, by the way, oh, talk okay. about uh, their impending climb and their relationship. Egret's like, uh, I won't tell the others, but I know you. I know I know you didn't stop being Your a secret safe with when you me. Walked into... yeah. He's like, what do you mean? Yeah, he, yeah, like, he, like, he like pauses and like looks around like, you about to rat on me right now? Because his response to this means I'm actually not even with you now. You know, I'm prepared for you to tell everybody that at this moment, I am still a crow. And she goes ahead and backs him into a corner and is like, I know that's what you think I'm about to say, but now you can't fucking do that. Okay. You're mine now. 
I'm your lady and you'll treat me right. You've always treated me right. And that's how this is going to go. And while uh, I don't think this is exactly the way you want to start out a relationship by any means, I do think it's a tactically smart move by Egret here to try and get Jon Snow on their side. He's a, he's a very helpful ally in their cause. Oh, yeah. And uh, he, she, they clearly have a great, great chemistry and admirance for each other. So, uh, you know, the whole like, I'm your lady now, you know, mm-hmm. you, don't, you don't betray me. Say you'll, ne- say you'll never betray me. And he like promises. Uh, and, uh, no, yeah, there, this whole conversation was great. Like, oh, you're, you're a real lover, Jon Snow. You know what the mm-hmm. other guys there, I don't know, the fact that, he, that she much. had to, she bru- she kicked some dude in the balls, you know, for, to get yeah. these, get these, uh, it kind of, it, kind of insinuated that she went and had sex with someone to get these and then kicked yeah. him in the balls and left and took the boots because I, she I was like, he move. wasn't good to me, Jon Snow, you know, the way you are. And like, she was like, just bring like very, you know, just like, I don't know, just okay with it, which was yeah. interesting. Uh, but like saying like, now you'll be loyal to me. And then, but like, just to get these boots. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe what the I, maybe loyal does. That's not what loyal means up in the in the the wildling north. I don't know. Maybe they just all go like at you, it. But you won't kill me, right? Yeah. Like don't betray me. You yeah. know. Um, we can fuck whoever we want up here, but don't you dare. Yeah. Uh, oh, no, it, oh no, that's what it was. Like uh, you were trembling like a or like a leaf in the wind or something. And he's like oh, only in the beginning. And she was like. Yeah, only beginning. only in the beginning. She was like, "Yeah, you're right. Actually, you know, like I don't know. I just they're they're so you good. Like they're fucking yeah, they're... incredible." And Rose Leslie as Egret was my other consideration for performance. Mm. I think she did an incredible job in this one. Um, you're staring at me, ass, Jon Snow. <laughs> you're staring at me, ass, Jon Snow. And then boom, look what I mean, right then and there. Yeah. You know, like, but <laughs> yeah, she she oh she was really I don't know, but. Just down on the ground, though, and then when they get up there, she was really good. Yeah, um, yeah. but, uh, yeah, they're they're having a tough time getting up the wall, and Egret strikes the wall and causes a massive crack, dislodging a large sheet of ice, sending several of their homies to their deaths, and Egret and John barely hang on by the safety of their rope, and Orel looks up to Tormund and goes, we have to cut them down. And this is the first time you're like, oh, you know what? Tormund's fucking dope. Because he goes, yeah, he goes, no, no. and he yeah, like, like holds onto the rope as hard as he can, and you're like, you know what? I fuck with you, dog. Yeah, you yeah. know, like, uh, I, but, I love that because, like, what I like about the wildlings here, at least his clan of wildlings, and uh, I know they have like their several different factions and stuff, and Mance explained that and stuff. But if you are with your homies, they're looking out for you, most likely. Mm-hmm. You know, Tormund, he. He didn't want his homies to die. That wasn't like a necessary evil that had to go away. He's just like, he didn't want that to happen. And now he's like, mm-hmm. if I can save as many of you as I possibly can, I'm gonna. Um, yeah. Who, and what's the me, warg's name? The Orel. Orel. Yeah, man. What a. Man, like nothing was even said. Like, no, you know, it was just stares and just like even after it was you know like just looking at each other and like no yeah. words have been spoken and that, it was just so awkward like what do you even say you know like well i kind of really hope you die there because uh well now this is awkward like uh yeah. don't really you know because i i, I kind of forgot what what even happens to this dude uh ah, ah i don't so, i remember um yeah i don't even really i remember, remember why he did this um oh. furthermore than Furthermore than you were holding us down, it's I I'm in love with Egret and I hate you for not being with me. Um, no. Yeah, that's why. Actually, he like, yeah, he, he's in love with Egret and is pissed that John's with her. So he's like, "We got to cut him loose. Let's kill them. Let's do it." He's an incel. That's all Oral is. Oh no. Oh, Oral no. the incel. Wow, that's amazing. That's yeah, he's just. A nice guy incredible bad guy but yeah wow. john sees what Aurel is doing and barely manages to swing them to safety and saves him and egret and it was the egret's reaction to this whenever she like climbs up with him like the way they like embrace and stuff their chemistry is just so fucking nuts dude like mm. 
I'm incredibly yeah. thankful that I will never be put in this position, hopefully, where I have to like save my girlfriend's life. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But I'm also jealous that I'll never experience exactly what they felt <laughs> in that specific moment. Like the afterwards. You yeah, know? Yeah. Like how good that has to feel. Yeah, you know? like, like... race. They, they haven't made it to the top of the wall yet, but whenever he pulls her onto that little ledge and he like hugs her and they're like head to head, like Oh, even yeah, even then. That's yeah. that's gotta be like a different level of like, whoa, we are really connected on a different level now. Like that's yeah. uh Dang. This is life debt type shit. Yeah, it's got it like the uh, ultimate like bad to like yeah. uh like yeah ultimate that, that's, catharsis. That's got to feel good though that embrace, but even better when they get all the way when up. You know that. Top. I thought that's you know, what you're talking I've about. Been yeah, just that even life. that I've one been moment. My whole life to see the see the world from the top of the wall. Yeah, but but that's what she thought. She thought that was it. Her view that mm. way. She's like that's her world. That's all she's known, and it it, it took John. And he's like, yo, check this shit out. So John to be like, hey. A little bit of a ray. I didn't know there was so much green in the whole galaxy moment. Dude, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of, I don't know. It was very, and right, right as, uh, you know, he got a little finger having his whole chaos as a ladder monologue too. And then right to that. And then, uh, like, it was just so, it was perfect, dude. Yeah. This one was a 10 out of 10 enjoyment for me. I think it's, yeah, no, it's there. This yeah. one was, it had, it was just, I don't know. This was, this was a good episode of Thrones. It was everywhere. It was all of it. It, it. It's firing on all those cylinders that we've said in the past. They will never, they will never slow down on, you know, we got to I think we got another mm. 10 enjoyment, another 10 in genre, which this season has not dipped below yet. Um, nope. Still no. And critically, oh, that's okay. the only one I... It's not a 10, but it's damn fucking good, you know? I don't... I don't know that it's worse than the last two, you know? I don't I, I don't think it's better. Mm-hmm. But, and it... I, maybe maybe just a little. Maybe a little. Maybe a 9.25 yeah. instead of a 9.5, critically. That's kind of what I was thinking. It's either right there or a little bit below, is what I was thinking. Mm. Um... I think I don't know. It, it maybe it's just the. It's the cloud. Whenever they can envelop all the storylines in one episode and still make it, you know, feel like yeah. that's like the only way that it gets like better. It's like, but yeah. but the the thing is, is that they're what they're enveloping in just this episode alone is more than what normal television shows do, anyways. Right. So it's like, how do you even really base right. that? But no, I think I think uh, like nine two five is fair, um, which right. would put put the episode at a nine seven five, um, and for the season that That's would be high, right? second, second place, uh, episode four, and now his watch is ended at a nine eight three, um, and that's just because it would it would be on the same level if we gave this a nine five critically. Mm. Um, it'd be on the this same actually level ends up before. being tied on the same level as the Battle of Blackwater Bay episode. Hey, okay, that's pretty good. Yeah, I'd say I'd Blackwater Bay is always landing as yeah. well. So that's yeah, gives you a chance um, for a really fire ass bottle episode. But yeah, that's the thing about this episode is that it gives you it gives you the high intensity of the climb the way the battle did in that episode. And it also provides you the politics of everything else going on. You get that interaction between Olena and Tywin and then Cersei and Tyrion and then Peter and Varys. And it's like these character interactions that Mm -hmm. you just don't get that level of depth of out of anywhere else. Like, it's just like, that's, that's, that's what this, this episode was, was just continuous. Like here's these two characters talking. Okay, now here's these two characters talking. Yeah. Okay, now here's these two characters talking. And all of them have this incredible chemistry and all of them have this incredible story to put forth. Like that's that's rare and they do it so fucking yeah. well. They're playing it so well that it's it's almost like the conversations that you're hearing, you don't even think of them as written in like a uh like George R. R. Martin or these people wrote them in a in a you know a story room somewhere, it just feels like that these are the conversations of the characters that we just know. Mm-hmm. Like 
it feel you know like maybe at the beginning it feels pretty written i don't know but like it just like the conversations just feel natural they just it feels like this is what cersei would say or do in this moment like you they know the character that well and i don't know it's it just everywhere though it's it's that for for everyone um and yeah just that's why this i think the show works so well is you get those moments where it's just two characters talking to each other Mm. that's all that's happening but for some reason your heart's racing during some of those scenes when it's just two people talking and it's just they're talking about a marriage or um like just i guess maybe killing someone you know or i don't know but like it's they're talking about something serious but it's just two people sitting in a chair having a conversation you're like oh my god i need to know what happens next now i need to go to the next episode and it's it's not i don't know it's not done to this level really anywhere else uh, much no. much else i guess um no this, this, this show was just a different level for so many seasons man it was so fucking good mm. but uh, yeah this is another goodie mhm but yeah so, let's uh one more before I sign off here and, um, mm, okay got a guilty pleasure you got one for me mm, okay the only thing i could say and i don't even know if it's that gu- it may be kind of guilty it was a TV show. Um, I watched it through high school, and maybe it's just nostalgia, nostalgic, nostalgia reasons why I still kind of go back to it every now and then, I guess. But it was Vampire Diaries. Yeah, that falls under the category for sure. I feel like it does. Okay, good, and and that's why I kind of wanted to hold on to it because this is the one I do I do actually have some guilt for, but like I got like way too into vampire diaries and then like there's a spinoff called the originals oh yeah which and is like a spinoff of that and, all that and like i lo- like i got it yeah so like i feel like that would be my actual guilty pleasure okay um, i did that's a good answer that's a good answer um yeah there is actually like one scene that i, I will go back to and it's uh in the originals and it's like uh it's kind of just like if i sometimes i'll watch like vader's hallway scene if i ever just need like a a badass Star Wars moment. I'll just like watch Vader just go off and just kill a cup, you know, or I don't know. Just sometimes that, that happens. But there's an originals moment that's kind of like that. Um, and it's, I don't know. So that's like the guilty thing that I actually go back to. I don't really watch the show, but I watch that scene kind of Mm. as a Vader hallway scene. Um, that's dope. With like the same admirance. You're like, God damn. If you care, it's, it's, it's Klaus in the show. It's out of the originals. And he's like the, the oldest and he's a hybrid. He's a werewolf and a vampire, and he came That's out. That's a pretty dope idea. They had him all chained up, and then he was like, nah, let me show you why I'm the most powerful one here. And then he kills pretty much everyone there. Um, so that's the scene. Yeah. I'm um, keeping a running you, notebook you, of our of my question times and, my, and our answers and stuff. So that's why that's why I wanted your answer there. I said, what's your guilty pleasure? And I wrote the chain smokers for me, and I wrote Vampire Diaries Universe for you, in parentheses, Klaus Badass Motherfucker. That covers it. There you go. Yeah, you got it. Um, yeah. Okay. Fuck yeah. Well, well, I guess I had to disclose that information, but that's okay. Um, no, it's okay. It's, it's okay. out there. I don't judge you one bit. That's the <laughs> thing. Is that like, like I said, I don't think anyone's enjoyment should ever be guilty. Um, mm. But there are certain things that just undeniably <laughs> fall under that category. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's not good. It isn't good. Like, yeah, right. I know. Right. I know. That's how I feel about good. like for yeah. another example. I love the show One Tree Hill. That show's not good. Um, mm. and it's it's a teenage drama. It's super. It's, it's fucking just what dumb. you grow up with, you know. Yep. It's just I, I it's watched really, it in high school. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. Yep. It's, it's, just... it's it, your guilty pleasure stuff will typically be stuff you liked when you were in high school. <laughs> yeah. That you never really let go of. That you're kind of like, yeah, you know what? That makes me feel like yeah. I did when I was in high school, which is a nice little feeling. Um, mm. if you liked high school, I did, but uh. Regardless, if you would, head to patreon.com slash pennybloompod where you'll find over 50 hours of exclusive content, including all sorts of comic book reviews, book reviews, movie reviews, and the like. I need to get my money up over there, do a, do a few more things. I'm about to start writing again, which I'm very excited to do. I need to find something I want to write about, though. So as soon as that happens, there will be a review there. I'm almost done with season six of Better Call Saul, so that might be my first endeavor over there as far as, as, far as a written review. Um, if you've watched it, that will be over there within the next couple of weeks, probably within the next week. Um, 
Head to Twitter, follow at Penny Bloom Pod, follow on Instagram at Penny Bloom Podcast. Remember to leave a five star rate and review wherever you might be listening. If you're a Star Wars fan, we just talked Mandalorian season three earlier today with the wonderful Claire De Janeiro. That was a great episode and a great conversation about uh, season three of The Mandalorian and then comparing it with seasons one and two in a ranking. Very fun. We've got our top 100 Star Wars characters. Uh, we've got part four coming up tomorrow and part five coming on Thursday. We are starting the Ahsokast on Wednesday, where we're discussing all the pivotal moments of Ahsoka Tano's journey as a character heading into the Ahsoka series in August. And this Wednesday is the Clone Wars movie. Very fun one. Can't wait for you to hear it. Uh, and Friday, we continue our comic book movie journey through film with Ben Affleck's Daredevil. So I'm excited for you all to hear that. Um, and thank you so much for being here. We'll be back next week for Game of Thrones Season 3, Episode 7, The Bear and the Maiden Fair. I was Colton Robertson. I was joined by Joseph George. Thank you very much, homie. Oh, thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure to be here. Oh, and it's always a pleasure to have you. And remember, peace, love, and bloom, and chaos is a ladder.